This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to today's live where we're going to be making these cute, simple alternatives to flower overload cupcakes. And I think we've all seen those pretty cupcakes on Insta and Pinterest that are covered in tons of pipe flowers. And for a lot of people, they're too time consuming or maybe your skill level just isn't there yet. So we're gonna do this simplified version that's gonna allow you to easily create a similar look and feel with a lot less skill and it'll take you a lot less time. So we're just gonna quickly talk about what you'll need if you wanna follow along. We've got one bag with a number 21 tip. It's a star tip right there. second with a number 199. This is a star tip that has a lot more points to it, so it'll give you a slightly varied and different look. And finally, a 104 tip that we're going to use to do a little ribbon instead of actually pipes and flowers. And then I have an optional fourth one if you'd like to add some leaves. This, not totally necessary. You could get away with just piping with these three. Maybe add some sprinkles if you want to, or if you want to give it a little more of that floral vibe, adding a few quick leaves is a nice little touch. So I've just gone with three colors of pink, but you can really do whatever you want and you can change it up, do different shades of the same color or mix in different colors. And I used a couple of colors to make these, some neon bright pink, a little red red or super red to get some tones like that kind of magenta. I use just a touch of black to dull my colors, gives you that kind of mauve shade. And for my green, I use just a lemon yellow and a little royal blue. And these are just all liquid gel colors. I like those for coloring my buttercreams, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm gonna go through each of these bags and cover the little techniques that we're gonna use first, and then we'll bring over some cupcakes and do some on those. So the first one I'm gonna use is my number 21 tip. This is a big, nice, open star tip. And we're gonna use it to pipe a rosette. So, the first thing you wanna do when you're piping rosettes or stars is make sure that you are floating that tip up off the surface. So you wanna have a nice gap. Usually it's about the same width as the tip opening. So if you're having trouble visualizing it, you can always use a cupcake really easy and just kind of hold that tip up there and then visualize that space so you know how high up to hold that tip so that frosting can balloon out and reach its full volume. If you're too close, things will be kind of smashed and flat and we don't want that look. So the first thing we're gonna do when we pipe a rosette is start with a nice little star. Right, so we'll pipe that little star in the center and then we're going to take that bag, pull it out to the side of the star while we're still piping and make a full rotation all the way around. So you're basically piping a star and then drawing a circle around the outside edge. As we get close to where we started, because you can kind of start in any position, you wanna taper off your pressure and keep pulling so that you get a nice kind of little gradual tapered um, point on the end and you get a nice soft look to that. So we'll go ahead and we'll practice one of those right here on our paper. We're going to hold the bag straight up and down in relation to the surface that we're piping on. So imagine this is on the top of a cake or on top of a cupcake. We're going to pull it up off the surface so there's a nice gap. Let that frosting balloon out, make a nice full star. And then while we're still piping, we're just going to draw a nice circle right around that inside star. And as I get close, I'm just going to ease up on that pressure, right? It's actually a little easier to do if you do them faster. It's hard to get that point. And that'll give us a nice rosette look. If you're looking to do tighter rosettes, you just do the same thing. and you basically pipe right on top of the star. So this is kind of an open flower style rosette. You see these a lot of times with 1M tips on the top of cupcakes, and then it'll take up the whole top of the cupcake. If we're doing a very traditional rosette, you're gonna pipe that star and then really make that little circle right on top of it. And you can see 
that gives you more height. So we're gonna do the big open ones because we want that flat kind of floral look. So that's our 21 tip. With our number 199, we're just gonna do the star. So same thing, keep that tip up off the surface. Make sure you have a nice <clears throat> gap there so that frosting can flow out completely. And we're just going to squeeze until we get a nice full star with beautiful ridges on it. And the important thing with these stars is you want it to be nice and big and full. And when it's done, you're gonna stop squeezing, let your pressure off the bag completely, and then pull away. If you're still squeezing while you pull away, you're going to get right that kind of Hershey Kiss look to it. And we want it to be kind of nice and flat and neat on the top, and not to have too many little points. So, as we start, we wanna be up off the surface, Give our bag a nice squeeze so we get a nice full star. Before it starts to wrinkle, we're going to let our pressure off the bag and just pull up then, right? The paper was pulling up on me a little bit, giving me problems, but you can see then that gives us a nice, beautiful, full star there. Lovely. And you can do these in varying sizes. You can keep squeezing and make the little um, ridges on those ruffled if you want and really change up the look just by how hard you squeeze the bag. But just to show you really close um, the difference, if I were to hold this closer to the surface, you can see it's going to give me right, a flatter star. And if I'm right on the surface, right, you can see it'll impede the flow. So this is why it's important to pull that bag, that tip up off the surface, so you get that nice full volume. If you're touching the surface, you're gonna get a dip in the center and you're really not gonna get the right look to your stars. You can play around a little bit with the height, holding it a little closer to get flatter ones, but if you're actually touching, it's usually gonna give you voids and issues in the center, and they're not gonna look full and they're not gonna take up as much space. So you'll have to do a lot more work to cover a bigger area if you're holding that tip too close to the surface because it won't allow your stars to expand fully. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now with our 104 tip, typically we would be piping flower petals, but in this case, we're just gonna make fun little ribbons. So we've got our 104 tip. I'm gonna take it and hold the fat end against the surface. I've got the bag at a 45 degree angle in my hand. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Too much talking already. And I'm gonna hold it so that the skinny end of this tip is pointing straight up. And I'm just gonna take it right along that surface and I'm going to pipe a nice zigzag motion, right? Cute makes nice little ribbons. You can actually use this to do bows and ribbons on the top of things like birthday cakes. It makes really pretty little designs. And if we make that more compact, then we get a nice little textured kind of technique. We get this kind of little flowy ribbon that we can use to fill an area. And it's a great way to quickly cover space on the top of a cupcake. Now, if you wanna do the leaves, they're really easy. I like using the number 352 tip. It is a V-shaped opening and it's actually really easy to use. You take it, one of the points, flat against the surface, right? So I'm touching with one of those little points and I'm holding my bag at a 45 degree angle. The other point is pointing straight up. That means the frosting is gonna balloon out both sides of that V-shaped opening. And when I get the size I want, I just pull. So this is one of those times where you're gonna still be squeezing as you remove the bag away because we actually want that tapered point. So typically, we're looking to avoid points on the end of our frosting, but in the case of leaves, you're using that to work to your advantage. So it's really easy to pop a few leaves in there next to a rosette and give yourself that look of a flower. So we've got our four techniques and our four bags. 
You can stop at three if you want to. I've got myself a nice little sample right there. And I'm just gonna start with the thing that takes up the most area. So I'm gonna start with that big rosette because I want a nice open area to get that in there. And I'm gonna work all my other details in around it. That way, if you get a little off center, you're not quite the space you wanna be, you can fill in with those other details. So because the rosette is gonna take up some space, you kinda of wanna imagine at least a tip width in, maybe a little more. And I'm gonna start kind of off to the left side. Nice big star. Draw a circle all the way around, right? And taper my pressure. And you can see that gives me that nice, beautiful rosette look. I can then take my bag with my number 199 and I can fill in some nice little dots. So I'm just gonna start all the way over here at the corner. Right next to it. All the way up to the edge of my cupcake. And then pull out my 104. and just squeeze it in on the other side and you can fill in that remaining area. Now, we're cute as is. If you feel like you've got any gaps or any little spaces, you can fill them in with other stuff. You can add leaves. It's even cute if you wanna add some sprinkles. I always like a nice sprinkle mix. And this takes me to the next subject because these are an easy one to handle. If you're not great at piping yet and you don't have the control to do piped flowers, these are a great way to add some variety to your cupcakes. And you can easily kind of make a fake or faux kind of sense of variety just by changing up the tips. So switching them around and doing the ribbon in another color and the rosette in another color will give you a nice false sense of variety, especially since you have three colors going on here. You can do some like this, switch the tips, do some more, switch them again, do some more. You can even do things like adding sprinkles, striping the bags, doing some with leaves, and you have this nice false sense of variety that allows you to just keep practicing those same three, four techniques over and over again and working on your skill level. So it's a great way to do that. There's other things like striping your bags, um, or even just mixing in some simpler or more complex cupcakes. If you're looking to give some more difficult things a try, like piping some flowers, but you're worried about the amount of time it takes, mixing things like this in will then allow you to speed that up. You can just do the more complicated stuff on a smaller number of cupcakes for an order, and that gives you a nice little time saver as well. Or if this is your more advanced one, you can even do some simpler styles, like just a nice plain swirl or something on top of there, just to mix it up and give your customers some variety. So I'm gonna go ahead and pipe a few more. I'm gonna to check with Tom to see if there's any questions and he is shaking his head. We'll do one or two more of these just to repeat the techniques and then we will finish up for the day. So with my rosette, just make sure you are up off the surface so you get a nice big star to start with. Nice and puffy. Make sure you're tapering off at the end. Go in quickly, just add a few little dots with that 199. And then finish it up with your ribbon. So it's a beautiful plain version of it. And I'll do one more and I'll add some leaves. So same thing, make sure I'm far enough in.
add my little ribbon. And if I want to give it a nice little touch just to give it the idea of flowers, I can go in and add some little leaves here and there, anywhere I think it needs it. Actually, that might be just perfect. So there we have three subtle variations on the same cupcake, and you have a nice, simple alternative to flower overload cakes. Cupcakes that is just gonna be easier and quicker to make and doesn't require any advanced piping skills. We hope you enjoyed today's live class and that you'll tune in for more.